Hey, everybody. Thanks for being here. So welcome to the Art of Healing with your host, Dr. Judy Jasek of Animal Healing Arts and Matt Rowe of Parsley Pet. During our show, we are talking about your pet's health, raw feeding, and alternative treatments for cancer, unexplained illnesses, and supporting your pet's natural ability to heal. Welcome, Dr. Judy, to this week's show. Thanks, Matt. Happy to be here. Yeah, this one's going to be kind of fun. Like, yeah. I mean, definitely something that if you own a dog, all of us have had these thoughts. Are we doing enough with them? Are they getting enough exercise? Am I socializing them enough? And so this show is going to be all about easy ways to keep your dog active, engaged, and socialized. So this is kind of fun. And we kind of started talking about this in the pre-show a little bit about what do you do is, I mean, is there a right or wrong way to exercise or socialize your dog? Yeah. And I think, I think it's important to, to look at what, what do dogs do naturally? Um, so I was sharing with you, Matt, that I was listening to this podcast from a dog trainer and she talked about like dogs, their, their behaviors from early on as puppies, there is instinctive behaviors that are actually rooted in um, developing hunting skills. So things like tug of war, dogs love to play tug of war, yeah. but what is that doing? That's building jaw strength. So mm. your dog's gonna wanna play tug of war. So if you don't want them like tugging on your clothes all the time, or you know, you, it, you might wanna find some outlet for them to, you know, to, to exercise that need. I think when you think about it, like this isn't just bad behavior, you know, sometimes I think we just, we have this idea in our head of how we want our dogs to behave and they're yeah. very, very trainable, mm -hmm. but these are natural behaviors. And when you think about it, okay, this is an instinctive behavior um, for dogs yeah. to want to tug for dogs to want to chase things. Um, mm. That's natural. So when your puppies running after your kids and your kids are crying because their puppies nipping their heels. That's normal behavior. This is the way that puppy is programmed. So yes, you can redirect that behavior, but you have to realize that that's normal behavior for that puppy. And if all, all you ever do is negative mm. reinforcement, that puppy's going to be so confused because they're like, well, what am I supposed to do then? You know, they've got these drives, these instincts, and you're telling them, don't do any of the stuff that nature is telling you you're meant to do. And you're not giving mm -hmm. them other options. So give them opportunities to play tug that's appropriate and, and where right. they can, they can exercise that instinct, but they're not just, you know, tugging on your robe in the morning, or whatever, you know, they're learning when it's appropriate and when it's not. And I think you have to be really, I think it's important for people to be really educated about mm. what's, what's natural for pets and what's, what's driving the behaviors because pets are not, they're not floor ornaments, right? Like they're, they're going right. to want activity. They're not really meant to just you know, lay around and, and sleep all day. If that's what you're looking for, you know, get a stuffed one because the live ones require interaction. <laughs> they absolutely do. But you started to point on something that's really important. I think all dogs are different. So yeah. for example, like my first dog was a Labrador. The ball for Doc, her name was Doc, and the ball for Doc was her existence the world would end. Somebody could break into my home. And as long as they had a ball, she'd be like, take whatever you want. Just throw that darn thing. <laughs> this is all I want to do. And so her exercise regime would involve throwing the ball. I mean, I remember going out on a large piece of property with a tennis racket for over two hours and hitting it. And she didn't quit. I thought yeah. I was going to kill her. Yeah. And so she just didn't want to stop. So it took my restraint of saying, okay, I think I've done too much. But for her, that was her. That was how she stayed active. That's how she stayed fit. Now, my new dog, 
I've had Leo now for five years and Leo is a hound. He is a mm-hmm. catahoula. Mm-hmm. And so all he wants to do is hunt. Mm-hmm. He could care less about a ball. Mm-hmm. It's really difficult to get him to exercise. But once I kind of figured him out a little bit and it took a few years, I know that he loves to go on hikes. He just wants to explore. He wants mm-hmm. to sniff. He wants to go around. He wants to go search. He wants to hunt. He wants to see if there's a rabbit rabbit behind that bush. And so for him, that's exercise, but he's not a very social dog. So when I get him around other dogs, it's not like, he's like, oh my gosh, my buddies are here. He's like, wait a second. Like, I don't know if you're safe or if I should do this. And so he gets in these moments of aggression, not because he's an angry dog, not because he's an aggressive dog. It's just his temperament. Right. And or competition. You know, he's hunting, yeah. you know, if he's a, a hunter by nature, he's like another dog It'd be competition, competition for the food supply. I have to share my rabbit with you when I catch it. Yeah, that's, that's a exactly. great, that's a great <laughs> point. I never really even thought about that, but really you're looking at all your dogs as being different. And you, and you brought up a great point, especially with puppies and stuff like that. You can hear him right now in the background. He's mad at the other dogs walking behind the house. And so when you look at these moments and that type of stuff, is yeah, when they're grabbing your rope, when they're coming up, when they're biting each other, when they're wrestling. But that brings up a good point. There are multiple forms to exercise your dog that don't involve playing ball with them. Yeah, well, you know, your lab, so Labrador is a retriever. There's a whole breed Mm -hmm. group of retrievers, your Labradors and your um, your Goldens and and those hunting dogs. So Mm -hmm. think about, you know, especially if you're looking at getting a new dog, think about what kind of activities are you most likely to do and what breeds are a good fit for that? Because a retriever, Mm -hmm. they're programmed to retrieve. And when, and you're talking, you know, in the field, it would be hunting, right? Like Mm -hmm. they take them out bird hunting and they would bring the birds back after they're Mm -hmm. shot. That's what they do. They, they retrieve and bring things back. So that's Mm -hmm. actually, the instinct. Um, Leo's more of a hunter. He wants to have his nose to the ground, looking under logs for things and using Mm -hmm. that nose. I mean, dogs are so nose driven and, and especially, you know, that the hound breeds, if you always have little kids running around your house, a herding breed may not be appropriate because guess what? They're going to try to herd. They're, Mm -hmm. they're going to want to corral, you know, that's their instinct is they're going to want to get everybody in one place and they're holding them there because that's what they do. That's Mm -hmm. their, if you ever watch, I mean, this is like fascinating to me. If you've ever gone to like uh, herding dog trials and you just watch these dogs um, pen sheep, or usually they use sheep or whatever they're using. It's awesome. Um, it's on hand signals. It's amazing. And a mm-hmm. lot of that is instinctive. Yes, they train it, but the reason that they use border collies and shelties mm-hmm. and, and, um, <clears throat> you know, healers, the mm-hmm. healer breeds blue and red healers, uh, is because they're, that's instinctive for those dogs to, mm-hmm. you know, to herd. So people over time have, bred dogs for certain traits. So investigate what, what those traits are. Um, yeah. I work with a couple now German shepherd breeders and, um, these are just, just beautiful dogs. And, but I see so many different outcomes with these puppies. And I've been mm. working with this one in particular for a couple of years now. And, and I see some of these puppies come in at six months old and I can't even touch them. I can't even get near them. They're just so like wigged out, like wow. for lack of a better word. Um, yeah. they, they just, they can't be handled. Um, and it's because they're not worked with. That's a very, very high drive breed. And it's mm-hmm. like a highly intelligent child. Mm-hmm. You have to give them structure. They're going to do something they're going to be doing. They're going to, they want to be busy and you have to give them that structure and you have to teach them things from day one, from the time they're eight weeks old, you got to be training them and providing that structure. Otherwise they're, they're going to decide what they're going to do. And unfortunately, a lot of these high drive breeds end up with some aggression because Mm. that drive has not been properly directed. 
So, yeah. you know, you have to think about what, what's appropriate for the dog. And, you know, if, if you're wondering what it is, you know, like go on YouTube and Google mm -hmm. puppies playing, you know, like watch yeah. what they do. What are they, the tug of war? They're going to wrestle. Mm -hmm. How do they kill prey? They wrestle them down to the ground and suffocate yeah. them usually, um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> or they're grabbing at their, at their hind legs. Mm -hmm. um, you know, these are things that, and, and chasing, you know, these are things that they're, um, they're programmed to do. So you look at those behaviors and keep in mind, right. okay, when I get my puppy, that's what they're going to want to be doing. And, and I do, yeah. I really recommend working with a trainer. Um, I think having somebody objective that can look at your situation, look at the breed of dog, what's your lifestyle? You know, do you have kids? Mm -hmm. Do you not have kids? Do you have, you know, elderly people, what are your specific needs um, for, you know, with the, with the dog and with the household mm -hmm. and have them help you because having just even a few months of that kind of direction yeah. with your pet, I, I think is just such a worthwhile investment. I, I always highly recommend that, that people work, work with a trainer because we get, and I do the same thing. I mean, my dogs have me wrapped around their little paws. Like there's no tomorrow. I mean, they just go, you know, whine and okay, do you need a treat? What do you need? You know, what can I, I do for you? They programmed you, Dr. Judy. My five pound yeah. chihuahua runs the household. Oh, no dear. question about it. <laughs> Who the boss is around here. Yeah. I have one too. And yeah. <laughs> Anything this dog says, my wife is like bowing and saying, oh yeah, whatever you need. And so, yeah, so, but you bring up a great point is before you ever go get a dog, slow down. Don't, I see the, some of the biggest mistakes being made is that knee jerk reaction or that quick decision like, oh, we just watched this really cool movie, Beverly Hills Chihuahua, and those chihuahuas look so cute and wonderful. Let's go buy a chihuahua tomorrow. And that's why you'll see an uptick in Chihuahua breeding because people are just saying, oh man, this is really cool until they really understand the breed. And if, you know, if they talk to Dr. Judy or myself who have Chihuahuas, be like, oh, I don't know. That's a big decision because a Chihuahua can show off as being aggressive, is show off as being protective for that one individual, mm -hmm. which can make it tough if you have a growing family and you have young, young kids in your house. Yeah, a chihuahua is wonderful and they're loving and they're great, but if they are gravitated towards you or your wife and your kids come over for a hug, the chihuahua will attack them. Yeah. The chihuahua will say, oh my gosh, you're in, getting in front of my woman or my man just as you're going down. And so really on that side is knowing what fits in with your family. And that's a great point is slowing it down, not just going to the rescue and saying, oh, we're going to rescue this one. What kind of breed do you feel mm -hmm. that this is? What is their temperament? Um, is it going to fit with our, if you have a big piece of property, a healer might work in being able to, because they're an extremely intelligent, or a border collie may work because they're an mm -hmm. extremely intelligent breed. They just need to constantly be moving. They need to have a job. Mm -hmm. That is their mission as where if you look at like um, another dog, let's say like a Labrador, they just want to love. They want to mm -hmm. love you. They want to retrieve. They want to please you. They want to do all those things. Whereas going to having them hang out in a farm field and running around and searching for stuff, they may not do it. They may just really be looking at you going, what are we doing today, dad? What are we doing today? How are right. we going to, you know, and they really just want to go please you in regards to that. So yeah, and understanding these individual breeds and how you're bringing them into your family and seeing if it fits with your lifestyle. It is truly, I mean, amazing on some of those lines that where I'll see individuals go out and get a German Shepherd that is a protective breed. I don't know that much about Shepherds, that German Shepherd breed, but it's one that that amount of intelligence, if it's not in that big of an animal mm -hmm. that can cause that amount of damage to somebody or that can damage your home if they're bored is something that is a big decision to make before you actually go out and buy it. Yeah. Well, they're shepherds, they're guardians. And that was their original, um, I think, use was they would guard 
you know, herds and, and then they got, you know, brought into uh, military use and things like that sure. and got trained because they just, they have that mentality and, and mm -hmm. they're very tough and they have a lot of drive. So that's why they're used in the military and used for police dogs. And they can be great, very, very, um, you know, loving dogs and they can do both. I actually know people that have fully, um, trained their German shepherds for protection. Mm -hmm. So if somebody breaks into your house, this dog is like going after them. like not just barking, they're going after them, but they know the difference. You know, mm -hmm. they know if your kids have friends over, they're like, yeah, this is cool. And just hang out. But mm -hmm. somebody looks suspicious. I actually have one client that told me a story that she has, um, she has a German shepherd that's fully protection trained and her husband was out of town and um, he traveled for work and he came in in the middle of the night and the dog heard that door at like two o'clock in the morning. And she said, that dog didn't even hit the stairs coming down. It was just flying. And then until he spoke and the dog knew it was him, but that dog was like, oh, wow. no, no questions asked. Nobody should be walking in the house at two in the morning. Yeah. And then obviously realized who it was. And like, oh, sorry, dad. <laughs> like, oh, I'm so, so, so sorry. I sorry. didn't think you'd do it. Just but protecting it's mom, it's all. <laughs> but that's, I mean, really as a pet owner, that is something that if you want that is a huge benefit of having a dog like a German Shepherd in mm -hmm. your life in mm -hmm. something like that. So I have to ask the question, kind of take it down a different road is what are your thoughts on dog parks for exercise? You know, I think there's pros and cons. Um, you know, here in the city, you know, we live in mm -hmm. suburban areas. It's, it's pretty hard to find places where you can legally let your dogs run off leash and yeah you know I just, just part of me that feels especially for bigger dogs I mean I think my mm. little chihuahuas probably walking on a leash isn't that big of a deal um <clears throat> but for big dogs that want to get out and be a dog it's hard mm. to find places where you can just let them run and be a dog so dog parks yeah. do allow that but I think there's things you need to be aware of first of all your dog needs to be social needs to actually enjoy being around other dogs um, mm -hmm. because if you're just taking your dog to the dog park to try to tire them out so that you know you can go home and <laughs> relax and Literally you have a sweet. tired dog but yeah. they're not social and they don't really enjoy playing with other dogs because not all dogs do um then that's a problem i i have another yeah. client that i was talking to and she'll take she takes her dog to the dog park and the dog hangs out with the people. The dog mm -hmm. loves to hang out with people. He's just, just a lovely golden retriever and just loves people. Doesn't yeah. really have a lot of interest in playing with other dogs. So she'll take him swimming because he loves, loves to swim. She actually takes him to an indoor swimming pool in the wintertime. Mm -hmm. And, you know, because he loves to that, he, he will chase a ball in the water to exhaustion, yeah. um, which she hasn't found that point of exhaustion yet I don't think of him but but that's what he loves to do so she's done a really right. great job of things she takes him hiking he loves to go hiking loves to be outside so we're always talking about you know places where she can take them that aren't too crowded mm -hmm. so you have to look at what you know your dog enjoys the other thing is there's going to be a lot of dogs there that you don't know so there is you know more disease risk so you just want to mm -hmm. bear that in mind, make sure your dog is nice and healthy, not mm -hmm. immunocompromised in any way if, if they're going to go to the, you know, to the dog park. So I think there's pros and cons. I'm, I'm actually surprised that I haven't heard more stories about fights at dog parks because mm -hmm. I haven't really heard very many. Um, I've heard a few, but as many people that go to dog parks, mm -hmm. I'm kind of surprised, but I think... And I'm not a behavioral expert, but my theory on that is that it's kind of neutral territory. Mm -hmm. You know, like if you take your dog into a home where another dog is living, they're going to be protective of their home mm. or cars. You know, dogs are very yes. protective of cars, um, even really friendly dogs. You always have to be careful mm -hmm. approaching cars. There's a dog inside because they're just naturally going to guard their space. So I think because yeah. it's a neutral territory, mm -hmm. um, probably, you know, you have less of that. If, you know, you had enough friends and family members with dogs where you could just be getting together with 
dogs and people, you know, you know, the dogs Mm -hmm. are healthy, you know, their personalities, you know, that would probably be a little bit safer, but if you, you know, use your discretion, Mm -hmm. um, you know, dog, dog parks can be okay. Yeah. And that's a, you know, and I take Leo to our local dog park. Um, it has a big field and it has a couple of options when you go there. If you go to the left side, that's where a lot of dogs are at. So dogs that are more socialized on that on the right side is just a big open space, almost like hiking. And there's not a lot of dogs over there. So, cause I know Leo is, I got to know him a little bit more when we went to a dog park that there wasn't that option, he would get into more fights Mm -hmm. and he would just be just aggressive. And I really thought, think, thought it was because he was a bad dog and come to realize he was just really bored. Like he looked at it. He really didn't want to go hang out with other dogs. And he looked at these other dogs as competition because being a hound, and you brought this up, which I thought was beautiful. Being a hound is I'm looking for rabbits. And if you get the rabbit and I don't get it, then I can't eat it. So I'm going to make sure you can't get this rabbit before I get it. And so in that moment is when I take him over to that dog park is allowing him to, to go around and look around the edges. And I walk with him and try to direct him to say, okay. And being that his breed is, he kind of has a herding mentality in his breed as well, is he wants to be with me because he wants to follow me around. So it takes a little bit more effort. I just can't just go sit at the picnic table and let him just go play because he will go to his own devices and be like, all right, so who do I need to go beat up here? And so in that moment is he's really looking at what is good and what's bad. But as a pet owner, I had to somewhat do some of that logic and deductive reasoning and say, is this right for him? Yeah, you know, I just... I just had this thought of like uh, a person that's an introvert going into like a party with a bunch of extroverts coming up. So I can liken this to a dog park. Leo goes to the dog park. He just wants to go hunt rabbits, but then there's all these Labradors that are coming up (laughs) wanting to be his next best friend. And he's like, I don't want to be part of that. I don't want to be part of that. I'm done. I'm going home, you know, leave me alone. Cause it's too much. That's not. You're getting in my way from doing what I want to do, which is go search for stuff yeah, and go hunt. And if you're going to stop that in me, then I don't want to do it. So, yeah. So really, you know, and, you know, we had talked about your chihuahuas. I don't take my chihuahua to the dog park. He doesn't like it. He's not really that overly active to the point. He's not like Leo who requires 30 minutes of exercise and running a day. He's like, no, nope, you walk me down the block, go get the mail, happy as a clam. Let me sleep. Let they me just want to be with their, and they just want to be with their person. Chihuahuas mm-hmm. are such one person dogs that, yeah. Um, I know, especially my little CJ, like she just wants to hang out with me. Like mm-hmm. she doesn't really care what we do. She's like, as long as I'm just hanging out with mom or I know where mom is, like when I'm working, mm-hmm. she'll be upstairs in my bedroom napping because she knows mm-hmm. I work around four o'clock. She'll wander down like, hey, mm-hmm. mom, dinner time, done working yet? Can I get some <laughs> attention now? You know, she kind of knows the routine, but oh, she yeah. knows where I am. Like she right. knows like, okay, it's time for work. I'm just going to go upstairs and nap. What a life, yeah. huh? Like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you, you, it's like she's got one job she's like i protect mom and i sleep all day all right i eat every once in a while too i eat you know my couple couple good squares a day and i'm a happy i'm a happy dog yeah what a life i mean how incredible is that and we even pick up their poop for him too oh yeah <laughs> yeah can you pick that up for me i, I <laughs> seem to have dropped something on my way um and but you got to know CJ. So I think as pet owners as well is it's not just a one and done. Oh, I'm going to get a dog. They're going to love the dog park. And we, we almost fabricate in our minds what we want them to do. But, you know, for those that have dogs, children, anybody else in their lives, husbands, wives, 
anything I thought of that I wanted them to do didn't happen the way that I thought. My expectations didn't get met. So I think in having a dog is we have to let go of these expectations of, oh, I'm gonna get a dog. We're gonna go to the dog park. They're gonna be great hikers. They're gonna follow me. They're gonna be super nice when people come over to my house. I guess at this point, we just don't know. Right, and, right. And that's, like I said, yeah. it's so important to think about what is your lifestyle? What activities do you want? Mm -hmm. If you want a dog to take hiking, you know, I mean, a lot of dogs will enjoy that kind of activity getting out, but you're also going to want one that's social because you're going to meet other people and other dogs. And, yeah. you know, you don't want a dog that's just super protective and, you know, somebody right. walks by with, you know, hiking poles. I've seen dogs like that on the trail because we do a lot of hiking and yeah, we're using our hiking poles and it'd be like dogs would be just like totally giving you the eye because they don't understand why they think you got a weapon or something. You know, they don't <laughs> or, understand why you're carrying these big sticks. Or four um, legs. Yeah. Right. Right. So you really do have to think about, you know, where, what, what is your lifestyle and what are your expectations? And then pick, pick the dog up mm -hmm. appropriately. Yes, and that meet your lifestyle. So lesson for this episode is slow down before you go get a dog. And if you've already made the decision, you have a dog, get to understand their personality. You may already know because they kind of train you. If you go to the dog park and they're constantly attacking other dogs, you're going to like, well, maybe he's not a dog park kind of dog. Right. And this is what happened with Leo is he would attack dogs when we went to a, a specific type of dog park, but it wasn't until I found this other one that I'm like, oh, okay, this work. And then I slowly introduced him into this. And so I, I started to direct the behavior because I knew, okay, what works, but I was willing to no longer ever go to a dog park and find another way to exercise him that mm -hmm. worked for him. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. That's great. And that's exactly what, you know, what, what you need to do. Yeah. As pet parents, we have a choice. And so in it, we really can follow along and we have to take the lead from our pet and no pun intended, but really <laughs> come into these moments and know, okay, this would, this is what works and this is what doesn't. Yeah. And pets, I mean, yeah. and, and just importantly to just remember your pet does need interaction and activity. So you have to figure out what, what that is, but mm -hmm. you need to be prepared to be doing something with your pet that, and also that's yeah. intellectually stimulating because somebody's mm -hmm. just walking, even, even if you went for a mile leash walk, you know, mm -hmm. that could be boring for some dogs. Like they want mm -hmm. something more to do, like sniffing right. around the neighborhood, same walking path that you walk every single day, they're going to get bored with that. And so mm -hmm. dogs, they also need intellectual stimulation. They, mm -hmm. um, they need to be able to, to think and, and have choices. Um, mm -hmm. I was actually reading, um, I was just reading an article. I think it was in dogs naturally magazine yesterday yeah. about, um, giving dogs options, even with food, like mm -hmm. instead of just mixing everything up and God forbid, don't be feeding your dog's kibble. Mm -hmm. but you're feeding a fresh food diet. So there's different ingredients. And then this particular author said, well, they just would leave some choices out. You know, you have kind of a base meal, but then you just mm -hmm. leave some other stuff out, let them forage, mimic foraging, because that's what dogs would do in nature and just yeah. put some different things out. And they might want different things on different days, depending on how their body is feeling. If they need right. to detox, they might want to eat more vegetable, just like dogs go out and eat grass. Yeah. Um, so giving them, you know, uh, some choices rather than just saying, okay, this is what I've decided mm -hmm. is the best thing for you to eat. And you're putting the same thing in their bowl. I mean, how would you want to, I wouldn't want to eat that way. The same thing day after day oh. after day. I want variety. And, and like you said, it, it, dogs are scavengers. And if yeah. I've, if my dog is a, it has that extreme scavenger mentality, make me work for my food. Okay. Right? Make me go at, you know, make me come at it. And it's not that it's bad. It's you're really occupying their mind and you're saying, oh, okay, now I got a task. Now I need to go do this. Right. And now I need to make this happen. That's why I think games are awesome for dogs. I mean, definitely, you know, we have a mat that's just all fuzzy and it's about 
three inches in length is all these tassels. And we just hide food in mm -hmm. all of the tassels when they start getting in, you know, their bark mode or they start getting their bored. So I make them work. I was yeah. like, all right, you got to go find that. You got to go make this happen. We've done some fun games with hiding food in boxes and done like the Russian doll thing where every box has a treat and it all, you know, graduates up to a bigger treat. But holy cow, it takes, you know, them 20, 30 minutes yeah. to go find where all these treats are. And they're exhausted at the end of it. That is activity. That is, you know, yeah. at that point, that is what they want. And that's what's good for them. Yeah, absolutely. Better than just, I mean, it's good to give them things to chew on too, but yeah. you know, you just give them a, a chew toy bully stick or something like that. I mean, they might chew on that, but yeah, when they actually have to engage their brain like mm -hmm. that so much better. And there's actually, there's a lot of enrichment toys. I'm, I'm hearing about different things all the time from my clients about, um, you know, different toys they found for their, you know, for their pets mm -hmm. that we can hide treats in and they have to you know, they have to chase them around or feeding mats yeah. where they have to, you know, chase down their food a little bit. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, they, dogs really enjoy all that stuff. Now I bought a lot of toys for my dogs that they've never touched. So <laughs> again, you have to find what your dog's going to enjoy. Cause I thought, Oh, this is really cool. I can hide treats in and they're going to love this. And they're like, no, not so much. Yeah. Yeah. You became a human in that moment. They're like, yeah, nice try doctor. Yeah, yeah, that right. didn't work. Yeah. <laughs> Dr. Judy, this show has been awesome. I, I love this topic because the more we socialize our dogs, the happier they are and the happier we are too at the end of the day. Yeah. The healthier they are, the calmer they are, the more love that they feel comfortable sharing with us and giving to us. Yeah. And, you know, I'm going to make one more point. I, yeah. I just had this case, this, uh, puppy that I saw and got an email from the owner puppies, like four months old and I'm working with a trainer and they want to put this puppy on, on behavioral meds, like pharmaceuticals to reduce anxiety. It's and I'm like, old. no, like I won't do it. Like I yeah. literally told her, you're going to have to find somebody else because right. to me, that's exactly what we're saying. It's, it's a lack of training. It's a lack of knowing your dog. You're not mm. giving the dog enough enrichment and you're just sedating the behavior. Like to me, that's wrong. So I just wanted to mention that don't fall into that trap because yeah. seeing this more and more with some trainers that, oh, we'll just medicate the dog and you know, they won't be bothering you anymore because we're medicating. I'm like, no, you, you have to train them and do these things that we talked about. So just don't fall into the medication trap. That's, yeah. that's just the wrong road to go down. That is an awesome point to make. Let your dog be a puppy. Yeah. Puppies are just puppies. There's nothing you can and, do. About and they don't auto train. You have to, you have to train right. them. You have to work with them and you have to, and you have to train them. So most dog yeah. problems are actually people problems. Yeah. That yeah. dog very... training is really people training. Yeah. The dogs kind of know what to do. You know, like they've got their mm -hmm. instincts, but you know, it's the people really that need to learn how to shape that behavior. Yeah. So don't over medicate your dogs. That's just the wrong path. No, no. It, let them be a dog, but figure out what they need mm -hmm. for them because they're all different, just like us. Yep. Absolutely. I Thank you so much for your time. And oh, my thank pleasure. you so much for this awesome show. Um, I hope you guys all took something from it. And I hope uh, you enjoy just an incredible afternoon with your dogs. Yeah, get outside. Enjoy the sunshine. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, get outside. <laughs> we'll talk to you guys soon. And uh, we'll see you next week. Uh, okay. Wednesdays at noon. We'll talk to you soon. Bye, everybody. See ya. <laughs>